my name is Marina Pasi, Executive Director for the National Tongan American Society here in Utah. I'm here tonight to bring the concerns of Pacific Islanders on the disciplinary processes you have in place. Processes where SROs end up creating a formal record or even a word of mouth record for our children. Where your disciplinary processes does more harm than help. Where your disciplinary processes is creating a generation that cannot participate in their community in their future. My question is, is this your strategic plan to promote systemic racism, whether knowingly or in ignorance, a system that can shut down the voices of Pacific Islanders and other ethnic communities of the future? I want to urge the board directors to be deliberate and measured as you deploy school resource officers to classroom and schools. I want to give the board a copy of, which is going around, of the article titled The School to Prison Pipeline Explained. It points out that when we misuse the police among communities of color, we facilitate the school to prison pipeline. In 2013, Richard Durbin held the first federal hearing on school to prison pipeline, an important step toward ending policies that favor incarceration over education and disproportionately pushing our ethnic minority students out of schools and into the jails. In opening the hearing, Senator Durham said the following to his subcommittee, quote, for many young people, our schools are increasingly a gateway to criminal justice system. This is depriving many children of their fundamental right to an education, end of quote. School resource officers are ordered to concentrate their efforts on ethnic minority students in our schools. Why is that? Why is, that there, why is it that there are more SROs on our west side schools than there are on our east side schools? What are your fears? Is it our size? Is it our languages? Are you uncomfortable with people that don't look, act, and believe as you do? Are your fears or hate of differences the basis of your decision in making process, decision making processes? I address this to you because you are the decision makers here. If these are the basis of your decision, then perhaps we need to reconsider your community service position. Because the reality of the secret fears and dislike of diversity is making a very loud noise in the community. Not to mention even here in your own school board where only one ethnic minority is serving seems to be a distract, and especially in a district where it's going to be minority my majority reaching before even the, com the country reaches minority majority. There's some type of fear of differences here. What's up with that? This type of behavior on the part of school of officials, leaders and decision makers is destructive to communities of color because it marginalizes our children to the point that they embrace the stigma and the label that has been placed upon them. A civil rights movement is growing. It's the one that has the potential to address the roots of deeply ingrained hatred and fear of whoever is designated as quote, other, unquote, based on skin color. Programs in the past have begun to address these issues. For example, the Courageous Conversation Program. What happened to that? That were the questions and answers too hard to hear. I want to encourage the school board to muster at the political and social will to publicly address the root causes of system, systemic bigotry against our most vulnerable students. And if you find that, you, that your fears disqualified you for the job, then be courageous and step down so that our children can be children and not criminal. Thank you for the opportunity to speak.